Very good. All right, good. So we've just been outside and shot some balls as far as we possibly could. Come see, Tyson. And in the process of doing so, um, we saw something relatively interesting happening. So basically, what we did is we had the straw and we shot the spitball three times. If I can kind of put the bendy bit there. So we shot from the very end, we'll say A. From the middle, we'll say B. And from the very, as far back as you could get it, we'll say C. And then what we saw was A went maybe six feet. B went maybe 8 feet, we we'll say. And then C went probably 12 or 13 feet, give or take. So what happened here was the next part of the lecture, which is this idea of impulse. Yeah, all right. So we had our handy-dandy spitball. What we did is we gave the spitball momentum, right? It already had a mass. We gave it a velocity by forcing it, by blowing on it, by making it move, okay? What <coughs> gave it that momentum was something called impulse. Impulse is uh, the hit, the push, the shove, the pull, whatever you do to make something move. In baseball, you hit it with a bat. In football, you throw it with your arm. In soccer, you kick it uh, with your foot. In hockey, you hit it with a stick. With a car, you move it with an engine. Whatever it is you do to make the thing change its momentum, that's called impulse. Mathematically, impulse is force times time. Now, I'm sure you're looking at force times time, you're looking at this picture and going, oh, of course, I see exactly what you're referring to. No? All right, let me tell you. All right, so basically, every time you blew the ball, blew the spitball, you blew it with the same force, right? give or take, you took a deep breath, you huffed and puffed and blew the house down as hard as you possibly could every time, right? But when you put, blew it from A, it hardly went anywhere at all, in some cases the bed just fell out of the straw, because the time was so low. That force when you blow on it can only be happening when the straw, when the spitball is actually in the straw, the moment the spitball leaves the straw, that air basically disappears and the force no longer is pushing on the straw and behind the spitball. So when you blew it from here, the time was absolutely almost instantaneous. It was a moment of time, a very small amount of time. Here, it's a very small amount of time, but only a slightly less small amount of time. Here, it's slightly longer. So, versus, versus, alright? I mean, really, it's momentary changes in time. You couldn't time it with a stopwatch. There's no way you could figure out what that is without like a high-speed camera, but indeed it was a in time. But even those small little moments of time made huge differences, well, huge being relative term, in how far your spitballs went. So force times time. It's not just how hard you push it, or in this case blow it, it's also how long you push it, blow it, pull it, move it for force times time. In sports, this is beautiful because you're, if ever you guys ever play any sports, you have a coach or a mom or a dad who tells you these things all the time, your coaches will always tell you this, follow through. What they're really telling you is force times time, force times time. Follow starts with an F, through starts with a T, follow through, force times time. It's like, cool, or what? I love that. Um, but that's what they're telling you. Because in baseball, a bunt, clunk, you stop, a home run, clunk, you follow through. It's that so small amount of time that the ball is in contact with the bat, but because the bunt, it's hardly at all, the follow through, it's a split second longer. Tennis, lob versus a smash, seconds longer. Soccer, pass versus a shot on goal, seconds or milliseconds longer. If that ever so slightly longer contact with the ball or the puck or the whatever it is that you're hitting or shoving or pushing that makes the difference between a little bit versus a lot follow through. My favorite formula of all of physics is this guy here. Ft is equal to oops, is equal to delta mv. This delta means change in. You'll see this pretty often in, in physics in particular. It just means change. Something is changing. So what this means is impulse is equal to a change in momentum. Right? Impulse is equal to a change in momentum. 
You gave it an impulse by blowing on the straw, you changed the momentum of the spitball. The ball, the balls, the bat's impulse on the ball changes the momentum of the ball tremendously. Um, so on and so forth. The reason why this is my favorite formula in physics is because this is the formula that keeps you safe, right here. Okay? Because momentum kills. Change in momentum is very, very dangerous. Let me put this over here. Right? And let's bring back our handy dandy car. Oh, wow. All right. Oh. All right. Surprise <laughs> creation ever. There's mom. There's you. And there's fucking a wonderful. All right. So there you go. Oh my god. So again, you're tilling along, minding your own business. Um, and, and your mom sees, okay, so your car has a momentum. That's a huge amount of momentum because it's a like, car. So your car weighs approximately, give or take, 2,000 pounds. And we'll say it's going at a speed of approximately 30 miles an hour. So even though this isn't a normal way of doing this, we'll just multiply that together and say 60,000 momentum. Normally it would be a metric, but it doesn't really matter for what we're doing here. So your car is moving forward with 60,000 momentum. Decent is that, momentum. Is that an MN? Is what an MN? 30 miles per hour. Per hour, okay. So, so 60,000 momentum, all right, give or take. Um, certainly not something you would like to get hit with, okay? Like, there's an amount of momentum. Yeah, so now, off in the distance, your mom sees a handy dandy stop sign. And she sees it far enough away that she's able to apply the brakes and slow down. So she goes from 60,000 momentum to zero momentum. 10, 15, 20 seconds. You barely feel it. The time it takes her to change momentum is so long that the force you feel is absolutely minimal. You may not even notice that you stop. On the flip side, she accelerates away from the, the, the stop sign. She goes from zero momentum to 60 momentum to 30 miles an hour. Again, 10, 15, 20 seconds. The time it takes her to change the momentum is so long that you barely feel any force at all. However, now we have Sammy the squirrel. <laughs> Oh, no. Who jumps in front of the car? So Sam and the squirrel jumps in front of the car and your mom sees Sam and the squirrel and slams on the brakes. Everything on this side of the equation is identical. The 60 to 0 is the same amount. The momentum change is identical. What changes is the time. Since the time now is so fast, and these are directly proportional, the force that you are now hit with is much greater, and you're uncomfortable. You're probably still living to tell the tale, because she probably still only stops in maybe, you know, five, eight seconds, can only stop so quickly at 30 miles an hour, but she stops much faster than she stood with the stop sign. Since she stopped faster, the force is increased, and that might hurt or be uncomfortable. It'd be like, Mom, what just happened? Why didn't you slam on the brakes? Whatever. Now, let's pretend this has nothing to do with you whatsoever. And instead of Sammy the suicidal squirrel, we have Wally the Wall of Doom. All right. So suddenly out of nowhere, you're just somebody that you don't know and don't care about, because this is a thought problem. But suddenly this wall pops out of nowhere, and unfortunately, our poor little friend hits the wall. Taking our momentum from 60,000 to zero in a split second. The force, the time, is unbelievably short. The force is unbelievably huge. Actually, they're inversely proportional. So directly before I was wrong. Okay. So that's where things go really, really bad. It's the exact same problem on this side as it was every other time. That momentum change has always been identical. No difference here. The difference has been the time that that momentum change has happened. And the faster it happens, the more deadly it is. And that's why this is my most famous formula of all time, because this is why you wear seatbelts. This is why you have airbags. 
in part. This is why cars have what's called crumple zones. Cars are designed to crush. They are not designed to walk away from an accident. They are designed to get destroyed in an accident. Because the amount of time it takes your car to crush, the amount of time it takes you to hit the airbag, the amount of time it takes you to hit the, 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 the seatbelt, that time increases, making the force that hits you decrease. Instead of a lethal accident, it's one you might be able to walk away from because of all these safety devices. Okay? Football players wear pads, helmets, same reason. When you go on your bicycles, when you go on your skateboards, when you do whatever it is that you do when you wear your helmets, even though if you've ever felt a helmet, it doesn't feel like a whole lot of softness there. It's not like you're wearing a pillow on your head. But indeed, that small little bit of time change that it takes to have your head hit the helmet and hit the cement, that nanosecond of difference lets you walk away from the accident. Where a head cement, you may not be walking away from the accident. Okay? So always wear your helmet, and that's because of this formula right here. It keeps you safe. Right? Go ahead. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, it can be really. Now let me show you one more thing before I let you. Well, before we go, wow, we actually finished this sort of on time. So try this. Don't hurt yourself. But try this. Um, with your handy dandy hands, use your handy dandy knuckles, which have no handy dandy pads on them whatsoever. <laughs> now what I want you to do is give your handy dandy hands a little bit of momentum, and what I want you to do is just hit the table just hard enough to feel it. Don't don't go home ready. Just hit it hard enough with your knuckles. Hard enough to feel it. Now, next thing I want you to do, you can feel how hard you can hit it. You can't hit it very hard before it hurts. That momentum comes to a screeching halt almost instantaneously. Now, do it with this part of your hand, where it's cushioned. You see the difference? You can really smack the table. You can put a lot of force on the table this way. Here, hardly any before, like, dude, that hurts. But here, you can really smack it. Also, this part of your hand, too, you can kind of hit it. Pretty hard part of your hand. Too. The only difference in all of these is time. Okay? And in fact, you've got even more momentum this way than you did this way. But golly jeepers, it hurts quick that way, right? And the only difference is time. A little bit of pressure difference, too, but primarily it's time. The slower your hand stops, the less force is in your hand. In this case, force equals pain. Okay, kind of like the momentum thing last week with the bowling balls hitting my shin. All right? Force equals pain. So, most important formula in physics <laughs> is that one right there. All right, good, you guys. So, are you ready? Actually, finished directly on time. How weird is that? I feel unnatural. All right, so. Time. Everybody loves quiz time. Oh boy, gee, we have a Christmas quiz. In this case, quiz is spelled C H W I Z. Christmas quiz. Alright, so. Ready? Is there a reindeer on it? No, but there's a box. Is this a box? Jim, I'd rather take the reindeer if you don't mind. Well, you got lucky to never print the second page. So, there's only one page here. I guess that's good. Alright. Alright, you guys. Why is it green? Why did you lie? 